Shane Steichen, the new head coach of the Indianapolis Colts, reports over the weekend suggesting that he would be the guy, and he is the guy. Was announced as the guy yesterday. They introduced him at a press conference with Jim Irsay, Chris Ballard, the GM. And before we get to some of the sound, I really would love to know how hard it was for Chris Ballard to talk Irsay out of hiring Jeff Saturday. Because Jeff Saturday easily could have been kicked to the curb after the first round of interviews, but Ursay gave Saturday two or three interviews, and I felt like he was just waiting for the moment to give Jeff Saturday the job. And there has to be a story that Chris Ballard will tell his grandchildren about the year that he somehow convinced Jim Ursay to not hire Jeff Saturday because, you know, if you're Ursay and you're determined to hire Saturday – you're not going to hire Shane Steichen instead of Jeff Saturday. You're going to hire somebody who's an established coach, I would think, somebody who's got real experience because, hell, Jeff Saturday's got more head coaching experience than Shane Steichen. So I, I, I'm impressed by Chris Ballard's ability to get Ursay to get off Saturday and on Steichen, Chris. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I mean, Ballard's a, you know, a master class communicator. I think we both know that from our time around him at the Combine, whatever. You could tell he's smart. He's calculated, you know, he knows how to sell his product himself, the team, whatever that way. Hopefully he was able to work that magic. Uh, You know, again, I I like this hire. I I saw some people out there might go like, oh, it's another guy that came from Philadelphia just like Frank Reich and won, you know, right off of a a Super Bowl appearance. All All right, but what's that got to do anything? Just, just Philadelphia is the only commonality there, the only common link. It was not the same coaching staff. It's not like you're getting the same philosophy. It has nothing to do with it. I, I think this is, for me, and again, we'll see where he is as a head coach, but this is a guy I, I think really 2020, end of 2019, 2020 for sure is – when I really started to go, wait, who is this guy? I like his offense. Look what he's doing with Justin Herbert. And have felt really from that time on, I did not think they should have got rid of him out there with the Chargers. But from that time on, he's a guy I had my eye on because I just went, I think he's a rising star as far as offensive minds are concerned. And his, you know, offense not only with Justin Herbert, but again, what we saw the last few year, uh, last few years in Philadelphia. And again, it's not even his offense what we saw. He invented an offense that fit Jalen Hurts and what they had there in Philadelphia. So again, we'll see how it is as a head coach. But I know I've been certainly impressed with the offensive game plan orchestration from this guy for a few years now. And Chris Ballard was asked about hiring another Eagles offensive coach, and he said, same logo, That's right. different team. That's right. That meant, meant nothing. Yeah. So um, it, it still big picture surprised me because I thought Ursay was going to find a way to hire Saturday. Yeah, so yeah, I hear you. Kudos to Ursay for doing something that fits between the buoys of reason and common sense, and now we'll see what the Colts do. Here is Shane Steichen on the challenge of getting a quarterback who can win in Indianapolis four years after Andrew Luck retired and Jim Ursay maybe spilling the beans on what the team plans to do at quarterback. I think you just mentioned it a few minutes ago, but will you call the plays here? And how much would you say the offense has changed from what you did with Phillip to what you did with Jalen? Yeah, uh, I will call the place here. Um, it it, it uh, obviously the 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 offense is going to be dictated on who's playing quarterback. That's how you build the system. What does he do well? What is their strengths? But not only just the quarterback, it's the players too. Uh, what does Pittman run well, receiver wise? You know, the tight ends, the backs, Jonathan Taylor, the offensive line. What do they do well? Uh, we want to do a hell of a job of trying to put our guys in position to make plays. You know, no one can shy away from the fact what quarterback means in this league and how we have to look f- going forward. Where, where Shane and Chris really, you know, dig into this draft and really see where you're at. Do you stay put? Do you trade up? You know, there, there's many things you can do. Uh, they took Jalen in the second round. So, trade um, back. Yeah, trade back. So, um, he likes that'll picks. Be a, that'll be a Twitter freaking quote. <laughs> he, he likes picks. Uh, 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 although the Alabama guy doesn't look bad, I tell you. He's hilarious. Uh oh, buddy. Yeah. Uh oh. I'm sure Chris Ballard loves to have the owner tip their hand publicly 
at a time when everyone is keeping their mouths shut about who they like in the draft. Don't give Jim Irsay a microphone. So the Alabama guy, obviously Bryce Young, if he's there, and there's been indications maybe the Colts will even try to move up. Maybe they'll be the team that does the deal with the Bears, gets in front of the Texans, has their pick of the quarterbacks. Those are all moves to be made, decisions to be determined in the future. But Chris, I I think it's really not a surprise that with Shane Steichen, who proved he knows how to adapt an offense to Jalen Hurts, they're going to be looking for a guy fresh out of college. Yeah. As opposed to the latest yes. veteran quarterback right. because this whole veteran thing hasn't worked. And it, it's it's a mistake to just abandon that approach because it hasn't worked. You could argue they're due. You could argue that after kissing frogs for four straight years, they're about to have one that turns into a prince. Isn't that how that old fable yeah, worked? That's how so they say. Why abandon it now? Maybe this is the year to get Derek Carr, get Aaron Rodgers, get somebody out there who's got some wear and tear but has proven they can do it because that's the one big difference between veteran quarterback who's going to hit the market and be desirable over one of these rookies. We know the guys who have proven themselves have the ability yeah. to do it right. as long as you get them on your team before father time begins the process of clunking them over the head with – I still – I always forget. It's a big, big, big uh, – what's that thing called? The It's not a stopwatch. Hourglass, big hourglass yeah, right. or – the 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 staff whatever it is that's uh yeah father time wins inevitably and father time has won as it relates to several of the guys Carson Wentz didn't fall in that category Carson Wentz just uh, something happened to him along the way where he just didn't have it anymore yeah the level where he used to right but lost the veteran quarterback thing hasn't worked no it hasn't you know I think they have to be careful I wouldn't say like to your point I don't think you you know, box yourself into a corner and go, no way will we do any veteran quarterback. No, you do your due diligence and research and all of that, right? I mean, yeah, you said it right. Carson Wentz wasn't a horrible thing. There was a lot of positive there. They almost made it. The year before, Phillip Rivers, they did make it. You know, so it wasn't a total failure there as far as that department's concerned. But I also think that the fan base, or I would imagine, and just, you know, hearing things out there throughout the year, they don't want to go down that road again either, right? And I think you're kind of maybe flirting with career suicide if you're Chris Ballard. If you do go that route and it doesn't work out again, then it's like all eyes will be on him. I I expect this. This is why I think, you know, I think it's a a great match, not only because I think Shane Steichen's a, a great offensive mind in the NFL right now, but I would think part of the lure of this job was the the fact, hey, it's pick number four. I'm going to be able to draft a quarterback and figure out the offense I want to run around him like like he just discussed. Oh, hey, it's Justin Herbert. Wow, whoa, that year, rookie year, it was the, what, top ten offense in football or right around that, and they were throwing the ball deep down the field and doing all that. Got to Philadelphia, tried to kind of run that offense, realized it wasn't for Jalen Hurts, and pivoted and started to do something else. So that's where I think, you know, is the excitement around this. And, you know, the the Colts are good, right? But I, are, am I ready to sit here and tell you that – are the Colts, like, ready – like, are they ready right now? Or, or do we look at them as in the window of the Super Bowl as it stands right now? I kind of think that – that window kind of closed the last two years to where now, yeah, I'd want more of a blank canvas if I'm Shane Steichen to start to form my team and this new next generation of Colts and, and go from there. I don't know, Mike, you 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 buy into that or you, would you rather do the veteran thing? Well, I mean, going into this season, I thought the Colts had a chance I know. to be pretty good. Matt Ryan fell into their laps. We didn't realize that Matt Ryan was going to – have such a dip in his overall performance and was it him was it the players around him the O-line. There were for Jonathan Taylor yep. he was the consensus number one fantasy player and you know everything was was looking good the air was pointing up remember remember all the conversations about I'm going to build a wall, a wall. And, and the wall they was crumbled wall. it crumbled the wall is crumbled yeah. in Indianapolis yes. and and that uh, yeah we've talked about this repeatedly when you have a great offensive line You don't notice the offensive line. You notice everyone that benefits from having a great offensive line. When you have a bad offensive line, you notice it because all of a sudden your offense isn't working. And Quentin Nelson, 
had an off year. Yes. I don't know if having those contract negotiations that hovered right until the eve of the regular season opener, he complained after the regular season opener about that. He had that uncertainty looming. I don't know if it affected his mindset, if it affected I, – I don't know. It, it, something yeah, no, was off. You were right. And you see, when you bring in one guy, when you bring in one guy who has the attitude and the skill to transform an offensive line, you got all your eggs in that basket, and if that guy dips – you got a problem. So if they can get him back to where he was, then the the wall uh, gets yeah, built again. Right. Because all the other players get better if Quentin Nelson gets back to being who he has been in the past. Yeah, d definitely. He's got to he's got to play better. You know, I think some things happened there with that Colts team that maybe you know they weren't set, they were O line conversations and you know we didn't talk about them a lot maybe in the off season. You know, but last year when you look at it, you know what was different? They didn't have Eric Fisher at left tackle. They didn't have Mark Golowinski at right uh, right guard. They didn't have Jack Doyle at tight end. You know, those are three. Not saying they're superstars, but when it comes to run game, those are three damn good run game linemen and tight end. They lost that, and then you couple that with no Quentin Nelson and Braden Smith being you know a little banged up, I believe, a few times during the year. That's that's where it was hurt. So they got to kind of re you know, retool that part of their roster. And I would think Shane Steichen, after coming from Philadelphia and seeing the benefit of a great offensive line and what they just had, I mean, come on. I mean, we like we talked about all last week, it's like you talk to anybody in football. The Eagles' offensive line is as good as any offensive line we've seen maybe in the last decade. So I would think he's going to get back on track there. But, yeah, Mike, I mean, they're a weird one. Like, there's still a lot of good – but I don't look at them and go, oh, well, wait, they're just a player away from the cream of the crop anymore in the AFC. You know, hey, things change in one year. Teams can get old. You know, there's still a lot of good players, but I don't know if I necessarily look at it as like, oh, wait, a good quarterback, and I think they're back in the Super Bowl conversation. I think there's a little more meat left on the bone as far as fixing that roster. And one of the realities, Shane Steichen's in a position where he could work with Chris Ballard. And yeah. I was having a conversation with somebody about this on right. Monday. The idea that at the, at the airport ran into ran into uh, somebody. And I, I, I probably it probably wouldn't be a big deal if I said who it was, but somebody in the football world. And we were talking about the importance of coach and GM yeah. slapped together, right. working together, not having a, a dysfunctional environment where if things go sideways, coach blames the GM, GM bl blames the coach. We want to work together. And Chris Ballard and Shane Steichen should work together. And Steichen's in a position where he can, he can come to Chris Ballard and he can, he can tell him some things about some of these guys who are due to be free agents in 2023. And if this list is accurate that I pulled up on spotrack.com, holy crap, there's a Chris, lot, right? They got some guys. Yeah. They got some guys that are due to become free agents and a couple of offensive linemen like Jason Kelsey if he decides to play again. What what if what if Shane Steichen convinces Jason Kelsey to come to Indianapolis for a year? What if what if they can get uh that you've got Isaac Se uh, Seomalo even though he was a little bit of a goat for for you know him rocking forward yeah. on that on that third and short play, but uh, you you can bring guys that you know have that Eagles DNA, yeah, that Eagles sure. mindset. Sometimes right. that's what you need to transform a team. You're bringing the offensive coordinator. You bring a couple of members of the offense. Look at that. Look at that. They could, they could pilfer some guys. Oh, definitely. They could, they could try to bring some guys to upgrade that Colts offense. Yeah, uh, agreed. I mean, there, there's some guys there that, you know, would fit as uh, value-free agents. Okay, yeah, you got to spend a little money, but to your point, Okay, great, great. They're kind of establishing the culture I want here and know what I'm all about and what it takes to win. Wouldn't be shocked to see a few of those guys go in that direction. You know, I'm excited about Shane Steichen and what he can do here. Again, I, I think he's an offensive coordinator where I've looked at it. We've talked about it in the past, Mike, you know, and, and I felt this way, you know, really from the get-go is he's game plan specific, right? You know, it's not a guy that he just goes, hey, this is my system. This is what we do. And he proved he can he can change things up and think outside the box and do a lot of different stuff there. So between that, you know, I, I'm interested to see what he's going to do on the defensive side of the ball. Gus Bradley, the inventor of the Seattle scheme, he's done a great job, did a great job there last year. His defense is always good. It doesn't matter where he is. The, but will they keep him, or does he decide to do something more exotic on that side of the football? But, uh, yeah, I think the Colts are, you know, one of those teams where – 
kind of like in the middle of the NFL right now as far as the roster's concerned. Uh, there's some good players and some things you like, but, you know, offensively, right, Mike? Like, you know, who other than Jonathan Taylor, you know, Michael Pittman Jr. is really good, but do they have a star? Do they have a guy that can really make big plays do that? You know, defensively, I think you can in some ways argue the same thing. I like uh, DeForest Buckner. I like Yannick Ngakwe. I do. You know, but again, are these guys that are like, you know, a, a, a Chris Jones or somebody like that, you know, they, they might need a little more sizzle on their roster here this offseason to get them over the top. One of the things you'll see when a coach takes over a new team coming from a prior team, you know, he'll he'll be attracted to maybe one of the backup quarterbacks like a Gardner Minshew who's due to become a free agent. But but again, Steichen has made it clear it's not like he's bringing a system with him. He's going to build the system based upon who the quarterback is. So you don't necessarily need a Gardner Minshew to teach the offense to a rookie. The offense is going to be fashioned by the skills and abilities of the rookie. Yeah. So that's right. not as critical. But 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 if he likes what Gardner Minshew can do, and I, I, I don't know how the game of musical chairs is going to go. Is there going to be a starting job out there for Gardner Minshew? Could he be the bridge to a young quarterback? I don't know. But you'll, you'll know how much Shane Steichen does or doesn't like Gardner Minshew based on how aggressively they do or don't pursue him. Just based upon his overall abilities and what he brings to the table, maybe he's a guy that could end up in Indianapolis on that depth chart to go along with whoever they would end up with in the draft. I, I and like in philo in theory, you're 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 right. I think a lot of things you said there. The one thing I would say with Gardner Minshew, Michael, and we've had this talk before in our our history together. He he might be just like a little too good and a little too good of a leader to where you don't even want him to be that guy. You want the guy to be like let him and his personality flourish. Gardner Minshew does have a pretty strong personality. You know, he can practice and play well enough and when he knows the offense and a rookie's learning things to where you go, man, Gardner looks like he's the better guy. Like, you know, I think that's part of the reason, you know, they didn't want him hanging around there in, in, in Jacksonville too long. Just because it's, hey, he's kind of, he's, he's a good player. He's certainly not as talented as this guy, but this guy's learning and doing things and we want him to establish himself as the leader of the team and Trevor Lawrence. That would be one thing I would say. You know, you, you could think about. It. It's not all I'm saying is if he doesn't bring there, bring him there. It's not an indictment on Gardner Minshew. I think that's another possibility that could be in his thinking as well. Or Gardner Minshew in Jacksonville was fully aware of what it was like to work for a real NFL head coach, and then had to pivot to Urban Meyer. <laughs> yeah, he said, right? "Get me the hell out of here." Was going to be the guy in the locker Mister, room. Mister, get said me to out the of here. Players, yeah, guys, right. what in the hell? I mean, my God! Remember when Urban Meyer tried to create the impression there was actually a quarterback competition between, <laughs> yeah, Trevor Lawrence and yeah. Gardner Minshew before they traded Minshew for a sixth round pick for crying out loud? So Minshew, I think, has value. But you're right; you've got two different backup quarterbacks generally. Yeah. You've got the guy who comes in and understands his role, accepts it, and does everything he can to make the starter better. Then you got the backup who thinks he should be the starter and constantly competes to be the starter and to prove himself. And isn't just competing for the sake of making the starter better. Genuinely thinks, I'm the guy. Why am I not playing? And you run the risk of having a divided locker room if you've got Gardner Minshew guys plus starting quarterback guys and they, they end up at odds and that's not good for anybody. So that's going to be one of the challenges I think for Gardner Minshew, but, but we'll see maybe, maybe Shane Steichen's comfortable with that. It worked in Philly having yeah. Gardner Minshew around, right? Jalen hurts. Wasn't deterred by it. Maybe it's remember, remember last week, Howie Roseman made the comment and it was viewed as a slap at Carson Wentz. And it probably was. We want guys who embrace competition. We want guys who don't shy away from having someone else. And I'm paraphrasing, but basically someone else on the depth chart right. who's pretty damn good right. who wants to take that job. So maybe there's value in that mindset. You better be ready to go. You well, better be the yeah. best you can be. If you waver at all, we got somebody else who's going to take your spot. So you better be willing to compete yeah. with everyone Who's on this team? There's two schools of thinking with that. You know, you're you're right. You know, there there's the school of thinking of like, hey, here's Joe Montana, but we got Steve Mo Steve Young, you know, nipping at his heels. Whoa, Montana wins the Super Bowl in '88, has one of his best seasons ever in '89 and '90 as well. Hey, Joe, uh, Steve Young, Steve Young, Steve Young. Yeah, okay. So there is that. You know, 
We we saw that even in in Green Bay, they always had you know good quarterbacks around Brett Favre. None of them were Brett Favre, but yeah, we've had that approach where teams keep around the the good quarterbacks and make it competitive and make that starter you know stay on his p's and q's. Or we've seen it go the other way, you know, with like Peyton Manning. You know, most people can't even ever name a backup he ever had. And you were like, man, if the backup gets in, they're screwed. But that's the way they framed it there. So uh, it, it is interesting. I'd be interested to see what they do there in Indianapolis. But either way, I think this is a great hire for Chris Ballard. I like Shane Steichen. And, and I think in a lot of ways, yeah, you got a lot of core pieces to be competitive this year. But I don't look at them as a Super Bowl contender, at least not right now, before free agency and the, the current status of the roster. But a team that's not far off, and this is a guy that I would think could evaluate a quarterback and start to develop something that's, you know, damn good around him. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.